My name is Frank Avila. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And I'm here at the Irish American Heritage Center. And I just heard the President of Ireland, Higgins, come and give his speech here at the center. And he gave an excellent speech and he explained how the Irish people, how they came from Ireland and the struggles that they faced coming to a different part of the world. America and the struggle that they had here in America, and not only in America, throughout the world. And I have with me Tom Looney, and, and Tom faced the same struggle. Uh, I was reading a, a, an article about Tom, and he, uh, at the age of 12, he worked on a farm, and he worked hard. And that article explained all about Tom Looney, how he came here to America, and Tom explained when you came here, what jobs you had here, and also explain that you were in the Army. All right, Frank, uh, thank you for having me here, and uh, I'll try and, uh, and, uh, and make as brief as I can. There is a long story here, you know. <laughs> I've never met an Irishman that has a brief talk. No. <laughs> well, that's a relief, because this might happen. But, however, you might have to kick me in the shin or something. <laughs> But, um, yes, I came here, and uh, I can give you a brief uh, kind of rundown on how it was. Uh, my sister uh, had left, uh, we, we, of course, earlier on in my life, we went to uh, England, and my sister and all my family uh, went uh, to England, and I was the last one, I've been the youngest, uh, I finished off also in England, and hooked up with some of my family there including my sister, which was the closest to me uh, in age. And uh, she had desires to go to America, and she had some connections uh, and cousins and so on that were sponsoring at the time. And she got to New York, but I saw her off at uh, Southampton and the Queen Elizabeth, the big ship that was the biggest at the time. And um, she showed me where she was going to be sleeping while they were sailing across the Atlantic, you know, it was about a week sailing. And I was very, very uh, fascinated by the size of the ship and all that, you know. And she was so delighted that I was able to come to Southampton with her and see her off. That was back in 1958. And she write to me constantly and we were close, fairly close, you know, and, and later on in our life, we, I never knew my sister hardly at all because we were broken up and, and at home, you know, because my mother died when I was two, so we were all jobbed out, you know. But anyway, uh, to bring it up to the present time, uh, she would write and, and uh, say, you should come to America. And of course, getting uh, credentials to come to America took quite a while. And uh, eventually, uh, I got my papers for America. And I, now she had left New York and came to Chicago. So that's how I finished up in Chicago. Uh, so she um, uh, kind of steered the way. As a matter of fact, I was making good money in England, making uh, good jobs, worked hard at different things. But I liked to play the horses and the, <laughs> and, the, and the dogs as well. There was racetracks, dog tracks all over London. Yeah. And I'm just a young guy at that time in my teens. And I made big money, and I also gambled it, you know. So she had to send me the ticket <laughs> for to come to America, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, you know, she was able to do that. And uh, when I arrived here, I stayed with her for a day or a short time, and then I batched it with a couple of other bachelors, you know. And I got my first job in construction, and it was the Griffin Wheel Plant that were building a factory, a big factory. And I will say that my first day on the job, it was now, I came here at the end of October, blue sky every day when I came and I thought, Jesus, you know, 
in Ireland it rains a lot, there's a lot of clouds in the sky, and I thought, my God, why did it take me so long to get here? You know, it was absolutely brilliant, you know, blue sky every day, it was about 55 degrees. So, and then, of course, the winter started to hit in. Uh, in the meantime, I got a job through my sister driving a bulldozer. Now, I had done that in England. I had driven semis and different things. And the, her landlord was a builder. So I got my first job, actually, driving a bulldozer for the builder that was her landlord. I got a check. The first check I got in America was like about five times more than I would have earned even in England. And I thought, my God, this is fabulous. But that was the only check. The guy that went broke, I believe, a week <laughs> later, and some of the Irish guys that were working for him, he owed him about a month's pay. They were all grumbling about it, you know. That was the end of my, my short-term uh, uh, big check, you know. But I had fun. And I was able to buy an old car, even, at that stage, yeah. with that first check. And Hudson, I, was, I bought an old Hudson. And of course, I was soon broken into the American temperature. And I didn't realize that the temperature dropped here more than Ireland. And I came out one day and I had, I felt a, a strange sound coming out of the engine. And I thought, what the hell is that? Well, the engine cracked because the ice, there was no antifreeze on it. And I thought, oh, Jesus, so what am I going to do now? So I had a lovely car. It was the fabulous yeah. car. So they jumped it. They said, you can't. It's too old to put a new engine in it, you know. So anyway, I finished up that job, and then I got a, um, uh, I, now it's in the middle of winter. Yes. There was no work. So I, in the paper, a friend of mine, Pat Simon, that I was living with him and his brother, we saw in the Tribune, see the sunny Southwest and see America, sails. Jesus, you know, the weather's getting cold. I used to read about Zane Gray and the American wheat, and I used to read about Arizona, and I thought, God, that's where I want to be. So I signed up with the sales crew. Well, it turned out selling magazines door to door. <laughs> well, instead of going west and south, we were going east. So we started to, first stop was Terre Haute, Indiana, and it got colder as it went because now I'm getting closer to the real winter. Yeah. And knocking on the doors, and I used to have, I mean, literally freezing, you know. And I, and I used to go and knock on the door, and then the little lady would come out, you know. And them days, it wasn't, they were so, they wouldn't be scared like they are today. And if I could just, if she could just let me in to warm up, you don't have to buy anything, <laughs> you know. And, but I was successful selling. And then eventually I came back, and that's a long story, by the way, that yeah. you don't want to hear because there were so many things happened on that trip. I finished up going through all of Pennsylvania. Which I met with a lot of Irish in, in, on my way to, in, in Pittsburgh. We did Philadelphia. We went into New Jersey. I went all over New Jersey selling magazines. I finished up in New York City in um, Times Square, because these group that had these sales had lots of money. They were actually using our money, of course, because mm -hmm. they, were, they were putting the, that money supposedly in the bank for us. Yeah. But of course, we never got the money at the end of the day. So I had a hell of a time, even though I earned a lot of money, getting my fare back. So we had our little fisticuffs and all that kind of stuff. It was, they, were, they were a tough group, and I held my own with them. Yeah. But we finished up coming back to Chicago and uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, we went right through like all of New Jersey, quite a lot of New York. I will say that I was the top seller for them and I worked very hard at it, but we weren't rewarded like you should be normally rewarded, you know. Uh, I don't want to keep talking, guys, because... Well, when, so when, when, when you came to Chicago, I was reading the article in the Irish American News mm -hmm. that you became an electrician. That's right. That's and, right. And, uh, and and being um, afterwards, I mean, yes. I, I, you know, I, I, my background in England, I had among other things I did, but I was went to school for repairing television. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
So I was repairing TVs. And you here. started your own business, right? What I did, yeah. I started my own business first on the television repair. Yes. That's an story in itself, by the yes. way, because um, I used to go to all the Irish pubs and I used to build televisions, rebuild them, oh. and sell them to the to the Irish bars. Yeah. Right? Most of the guys who would give me a deposit, they paid a deposit. By the time they drafted my butt in the army, these guys owed me so much money yeah. that I would definitely have gone broke if, the, <laughs> if Uncle Sam hadn't yeah. grabbed me. Ah. You know what yeah. I mean? And then so you, you came from Ireland, the England, England to America. Right. right. And then when they drafted you in the army, you must have became a citizen. I wasn't a citizen. Oh, you, but no. they still drafted you? I did the time during Vietnam. Oh, yeah. And then I came out of the army and uh, uh, people think that when you do your stand in the army that you're automatically a citizen. Yeah, I would assume. You're not. No, I would you're not. No. no, but once you have the green card, though, yeah. you're you're classified as if you were a citizen. Oh, okay. So, you I mean, it sounds like unfair, yeah. but once you're here permanently, like you had with the green card, then you regard it like as if you were a citizen. So, how, how long did you serve in the army? Two years. Okay, you served in the army two years, you came back. Right. Did you start your own uh, television uh, I started again? my own, well, no. When I came back out of the Army, I had learned my lesson. I said, the business and television is not for me. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I just wasn't yeah. following up and getting yeah. paid. And I, but I made a lot of friends. Okay. You know, and uh, I got an opportunity to get into the, to the union. Okay. And then I worked in, in true apprenticeship. Yes. And then I went to school. I went to night school for about... I actually spent about 10 years in night school. Oh, excellent, yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah, and then I got a degree and I also uh, uh, worked for a company that uh, I learned, you know, and you know, you go through job training and stuff yeah. like that. And then I decided to start my own business. And then I read in the article that you started a cable company and you some of the buildings uh, you put in the, the cables. I actually built the first cable television for the Chicago market. Is that right? Yes. See? I built uh, Park Forest South, which is what they called it at that time, which is now University Park. Okay. It's where the uh, Governor State University is. Yeah, okay. We built that over a certain number of years because yes. it was, it, it, this was a, what they call a new community enterprise. Yes. It was a federally funded, and we had to go at the same speed as as the community was built. You know, we couldn't now. just go in and cable it, you know, yeah. we had to, so we were there over a number of years. Now, was this and your... That was, that was way back before there was any cable I, anywhere. I, I was fascinated reading because yeah. was this your cable company or were you working for No, no, I first worked for the company. Okay, yes. And I was one of the few that knew how to build yeah, cable okay. systems. Okay, yeah. I happened to go to school for it. Oh, God. And then they, uh, I was running the, the shop, yeah. running the show, yeah. and they went under. Okay. That was a, co a company called Corplex yeah. International, yeah. and uh, they were also funded by IMC yeah. Corporation and a bunch of others, but they went under. Now there was nobody there to finish the cable, yeah. they went under. I was invited in and uh, I had just started my business there, yeah. and I wanted to take over from where that company had left off, at least to get the cable finished, yeah. which was really a comedy act because that time the cable companies uh, would give us pitch to the villages and say, here, this is what we're going to do for you. That was the beginning of the cable business. And they say, well, you know, we get you local origination, we get you all kinds of programming and things like this. So they're asking me, I'm sitting down, I had no resources to do that kind of stuff. I wasn't funded by IMC or anybody else. So I'm sitting down, in fact, I was the front page of their newspaper at that time. It was really a comedy act. They sit down and say, well, are we going to get uh, uh, local origination when you finish up your, the cable? I said, no, sir, we're not. You're not going to get that. How about uh, the towers to pick up uh, Rockford and uh, Milwaukee? Yeah. And are you going to go with the higher towers? Yeah. No, sir, we're not going to do that either. And I thought, they're going to kick me out yeah. of here. But there was nobody else to go to at that time. Uh -huh. So I finished off the job, and I was there for 15 years. And it shows what Tom is explaining and what President Higgins mentioned about how an Irishman never gives up. That's right, that's he, right, we he, give it a go. He gives it a go, he, 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 he had a couple of jobs, he went bankrupt, he yeah. came back, he, uh, and the last one was cable, but he didn't quit. 
No, no. Can't... Actually, right after that, Frank, I got a big job then because we finished that. That was finished, would you believe? We started, that, st that job was started in 1968 and we finished it in 74. And so that's so far back. And we didn't have cable in the suburbs till 1985. Oh, so it was 11 years You were after. the pioneer. Yeah. You were yeah, a pioneer no of cable. cable. Yeah. Okay. Now, and, and from running the cable, in the article in the Irish American News about Tom Looney, because the reason why they had the article in the Irish American News, because he recently got an award. Yes. Explain your award that you just got. Well, uh, the Clannock Gale is, a, is a, an organization that is uh, very much uh, pro-Irish uh, in their heritage, you know, as far as uh, uh, independence from England and that kind of thing. Yes. And uh, uh, I happen to belong to that organization for many, many years, and uh, including, including uh, back in 1966 when I got out of the military, uh, they needed three uh, riflemen to do the honors at the Tonegale Monument here in Hillside. Hillside, yes. And uh, I was one of the three that was chosen then, which was the 50-year centennial of the Irish Free State. Yeah. You know, that was yes. the 50-year, 1966, you know, 1916, 1966. And, of course, through the years, I, we tried to help, you know, in various ways. Yeah. And I guess they must have been scratching the bottom of the barrel or something. They needed somebody. <laughs> but but you <laughs> but, get the award. But I will say they. I was very grateful. They they did give me an award and the Man of the Year award. Man of the Year. Yeah. It's for 2014. That's right. That's right. And and yeah. so here's Tom Looney reading the article because he knew about the cable. He started. Uh, uh, was that a TV show? Uh, I had that, a TV that, show. That yes. you wanted to bring the news from That's Ireland. Right. That's because right. Because why? Why? Uh, why did you want to bring the news from Ireland? Well, the trouble with that at that time is that there was a lot of of anti-Irish, uh, I guess, in the media, unfortunately. Yes. That had influence, and they the biggest issue to me was they passed uh, what they called Article Thirty One, and Article Thirty One said that that you have, if you adhere to Article 31, that means that anybody that has affiliation with the IRA or any of the uh, groups that would be freedom fighters, and we call them whatever, mm -hmm. uh, they call them all kinds of different things, but they were freedom fighters, and uh, anyone affiliated there uh, would not be allowed to go even on the radio or television. So that meant that if you compare with American history, with what was it Nathan Hale or you yeah. know the different heroes of the of the uh, Ir uh, the uh, American Revolution and the man that said you know uh, when he talked about freedom you know you I may not and I may not agree with what you say but I defend to you to the death you right to say it yeah uh, that's my philosophy <laughs> maybe I, I wouldn't die right on the spot about it but I, that was very definitely my my belief, yeah. very much of my yeah. belief. Yeah. So there were so many very intelligent men, like the man here tonight that has freedom. He's a professor and all that. And Our he president, to be H now, president Higgins. The president uh, Higgins yeah. was that type of man that he would have strenuously, and he has objected to this kind of thing that has occurred, yeah. and they abolished it. But he was one of the people that helped get rid of it, yeah. which is why I have the greatest admiration for him. Yeah. And, and he mentioned, President Higgins, that he held and participated in every offices from the local office to the top. That's right. That, exactly right. That's, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. by the way. And, and who would ever heard of, of, of a person being elected president that is, likes poet, yeah. is an artist, is a writer, a scientist. A scientist. Yeah. Look at the qualification that he yeah. has. I mean, he, he, he covers that facet. Uh, of Michael D. Higgins. I had the pleasure of meeting him because of my TV show, yes. and I met him at Dal Aaron, yes. which is like I know what you call it, the House of Representatives in yes. America. Dal Aaron for all the politicians, you know, and they have a big bar downstairs. Yes. You know, it's kind of a, a recreation place. You know, which is a bar. Yes. And I went there 
and I actually met him at the bar and had a drink. We touched on it tonight briefly. Uh, and then, you know, uh, what, what, yeah, what's good? Yeah, and we, uh, we talked about, uh, I had a program on television, my, my show, which was uh, the, the, about Manda Surat. And, and Tom and, Looney uh, had the first, I would think, the first Irish show, TV show, here in Chicago, and would you say in America or not? Not really, no. I think there was other shows, you know, that came about, and I did my bit on that but, score. But you were but a pioneer. I was, kinda, I was kind of motivated by uh, the events in the north of Ireland yeah. and the things that were happening at that time. Yeah. That was kind of my motivation. But the, the what I talked to him about then was the uh, Montserrat, which they call the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. Yeah. It is now probably 99% black, yeah. but they still raise the uh, Irish flag yeah. there, at, and they call it the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. Yeah. And I explained to him that I was showing that documentary on television here. And he said, Tom, he said, we gotta get together. This is our president. He wasn't president then, yeah. you know. Yeah. And he said, I have a bigger picture for you for the Barbados and what yeah. the influence yeah. of the Irish. Yeah. We never did get together on it. But we, he reminded <laughs> me again tonight, yeah. we talked about it yeah. just briefly in the library yeah. tonight. So it was just great seeing him here because and he was so interested and he has so much to offer yeah. In that whole area, because he was in the arts too, you know, he was brilliant man. You know. and, and so Tom Lee really started this TV show here in Chicago to bring the news. That's right. Yeah. And and put it on TV because they were banning that in Ireland. That's right. right. That, and, that and they didn't want to spread the word around. Yeah, well, they were banning the the appearance of the artists or like Jerry Adams or yeah. people who were affiliated in any way. And what happened there was it scared the life out of a lot of the reporters because they weren't able to interview certain people. Yeah. And there were people that were fi that were actually fired uh, that were on the radio and television networks because of that article that was like a, I know, it was like a prohibition, you know, it was an awful thing. And of course, when they got rid of that, then a lot of these good leaders that were in the background have come forward and, and have participated in many ways to get the peace treaty, treaty done. And that's why, uh, obviously, the ones that were fighting the battle, I think at the end of the day, served a, a big part of this whole success that came out to the uh, present agreement, which we call the present um, uh, agreement with Northern Ireland and, and Ireland, you know, the peace treaty. And, and so here's Tom Looney, came from Ireland, England, America, and his philosophy was that when you're in America, you have a right to speak, freedom of speech. And when he saw that they weren't allowing that in Ireland, he started this TV show. And how, how long right. did it run? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And, 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 and even though it's not running, but he was a pioneer to have other media pick where he left off. That's right, that's correct. Yeah. And, and yeah. Every, if, if you read the Irish American News, I mean, you have Fogarty, I mean, his writing, I mean, he, if you've ever heard, want to read an article about Ireland, I would read Fogarty's article, because I love his article. I know Chris, I know yeah, Chris. Chris Fogarty. is not afraid to speak out. No, right. Where, right, where right. Tom Looney is not afraid to speak out, because here in America we have freedom of speech. And, and so, and now, what are you doing now, Tom? Well, I'm sort of semi-retired right now, okay. Frank. Um, you know, we, we did work uh, many years uh, at the Irish Center here, yeah. as you know, with Ambrose, and, uh, and uh, it's great that we have such a great facility here. No, and, no, but, uh, but, but what, uh, are you an owner of a pub? Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry. Uh, we are still, I still run the Abbey Pub. And Ab uh, the, own the Abbey Pub, right. and uh, of course my family run it a little bit more than me, my son Pat. So 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 uh, you're you're married now. You haven't mentioned your wife. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you have I, a very I, lovely I, wife, I, right? I, I'm glad you reminded me because <laughs> I would really be in trouble, Frank. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, uh, we're married uh, now, going on uh, on uh, 47 years. Oh, God bless you. Uh, yeah. And um, you have we, kids. And we have four kids. Oh, yeah. And uh, my fam uh, my uh, uh, son here is uh, one son is the uh, he's a fireman for the city. Yeah. Chicago and um, my my youngest daughter is with the Board of Education. Uh, she's uh, uh, in social services okay. and she works with the hearing impaired. Okay. 
Uh, my uh, uh, third uh, daughter, or this uh, oldest daughter, is married and she's got three kids in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. And my oldest son is an electrician and he works with us as well. And so, so they're all kind of uh, close enough to yeah. us. And, and Tom Looney has a pub here on the Norwest side. What's the name of your yeah, pub Yeah, that's again? The, the Abbey Pub. The Abbey restaurant. Pub. And if you want to go listen to some excellent entertainment, Irish entertainers. That's right. Uh, uh, you have the bands, the singers, that's right, yeah. uh, poetry, and, and you even had some plays there too. Yeah, we've had plays in the past, yeah. Play. I mean, this is but, an excellent pub to go look at the art. Yeah, yeah we, we have the traditional Irish music. Uh, we have one of the oldest running Irish sessions. Uh, we bring all the games in from Ireland uh, on a satellite uh, for the for the Gaelic games, yeah. and we carry you know the, the soccer and all that stuff too. So and um, uh, but yes, uh, we 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 uh, we, do, we we keep plodding away at that too. Yeah. And and so and his wife, I think your wife is on the radio station too. Yes, my wife is in WPNA. WPNA. Uh, Fourteen ninety on the AM dial. And what time? And she's on from eleven till one every Saturday. Eleven AM to, to one, 1 PM. PM. Excellent. And that's, and that's the uh, O'Connor show. The O'Connor show. And she's on there now for over twenty-five years. And, and so this is Tom Looney, and Tom Looney is exactly the Irish person that the President Higgins was talking about. Is how when they come to a different country. Uh, where they came from, the struggle they had. Look at Tommy, he worked at different jobs. They, the, the business foreclosed, but uh, bankrupt, but he never gave up. That's right, he, thank he, you Frank. He yes. never gave up, and, and he's severe, he, he survived. He, and so, so I, and this is Tom Looney. Uh, in case you wanna see him, you can go over to the Abbey Pub uh, on Nelson Avenue there and go listen to very fine music. Uh, Tom Looney was awarded the 2014 award. Uh, what award again now? That was the Man of the Year Award for the Clannagale Clan Group. Clannagale Group, and you can read his article in the Irish American News in the uh, April edition. April edition, April, yes. Excellent yes. article about the Man of the Year, Tom Looney. Frank, thank you very much, Frank, you. Uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Okay, appreciate thank you. it. Thank you.